The question for Q&A, I have heard the benefits of micro mesh and mylar paper and how to use them from your videos. However, I always hear about the possibility of ruining the, ruining the pen from many individuals. I want to know what I should avoid when using mylar or micro mesh. What are the dire mistakes I should avoid when using it? Thanks, Brian. Um, it's really not as scary as it sounds. Probably the ones who are um, giving you a lot of caution are doing it because maybe they've had a bad experience themselves or they just want to really be clear about the risk that's out there. But keep in mind, this is a, I would not sell these products if I felt that there was a, a distinct chance that you could be ruining stuff. I, I give adequate, adequate disclaimers and all that, and I say, like, you're, grind, you're, you're, you're messing with your own nib, you're voiding your warranty when you do this, like, please be aware of that and understand that and take responsibility for that. So that's fine. Um, but in, in order to actually ruin your pen through something as relatively gentle as Mylar, um, a little bit more aggressive is the micro mesh, but it's 12,000 grit micro mesh. You can certainly get coarser grits, which are more aggressive that you may use more in like a regrinding type situation. But that is not what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't sell any of that type of stuff. It's really just for honing, the, honing that nib, smoothing it out a little bit. Um, even the micro mesh, which is the more aggressive one, in order to actually ruin it, there's basically two things that you would do. Um, the first one would be if you have tines, the tines of your nib, so if you're looking straight at the nib, right, so take the nib and point it like you're going to stab yourself in the eye, right, but don't actually stab yourself in the eye. That's a key part of this whole thing. Don't stab yourself in the eye. But anyway, if you're looking straight at your nib, you're going to see, you know, basically this. So you've got your tipping material. Oh, maybe I'll do it like this. You've got your tipping material, you've got one tine, and you've got the other tine, and you've got a slit that's cut straight down the middle. If you have a misalignment of those tines, which means that one of those tines is dropped below the other, that's going to cause it to feel scratchy because that tine is going to kind of scrape on the page as you're writing with it. And usually you're going to feel that in one direction and not the other because you know the tip is rounded and so when you're writing in this way it's going to write fine because it's got that rounded part and you're writing the other way this is going to be sharper and it's going to feel scratchier so if you go and you take this thing to micro mesh and you start doing figure eights and start grinding away that one tine then the other one is eventually it's going to eventually get ground away to the point where you know whatever I don't know how to use my hand <laughs> put my hands in that motion but you know it's going to grind away to the point where you don't have a proper alignment and your tines get all screwed up that's one way that you can mess it up and then what happens is the capillary action starts to get affected because you don't have enough of a tipping stuff on there that's one way to do it so the, f the first thing you always want to do is check the alignment of your tines because that alone may be enough to fix a kind of a scratchy nib which is usually that's kind of what i recommend for the micro mesh is when you have a noticeable scratch on the on the feel of the nib and you're trying to get that scratchy feeling out the mile the mylar is really more for taking a nib that already feels pretty smooth and making it really smooth the mylar is not so much for fixing a scratchy nib because it's not aggressive enough. If you feel it, it, it feels almost like leather because it's so, so relatively smooth, right? It's very, very like microscopic. It's like 0.3 micron or something. It's crazy um, how small the, the abrasives are on that paper. Anyway, so that's one thing is checking to make sure your tines are aligned okay so what you would do is you would bend up one to the point where they're aligned again and then you try writing with it you know using a loop something like this i just happen to have all this stuff right here i swear i didn't even plan that taking a loop something you know looking at your pen like that checking the alignment of the tines and then making sure that they're aligned before you start doing anything to smooth it out that is key <clears throat> The other thing that you can do is just flat out overdoing it, right? So if you are just doing figure eights and circles and just scratching back and forth and just way overdoing it, then that, that could also ruin your nib. Beyond that, it's really tough to do too much damage with either of these things. And you really kind of have to do it a lot. I guess if you're like, you know, have your pen over rotated in your hand and you're doing crazy stuff like that, you could ruin it too. Um, but 
I honestly have had so few people that have caused any damage to their pens whatsoever using these that it's barely even a concern. So as long as you're cautious and you're aware of what you're doing when you do it, you're probably not gonna cause any harm to your pens. But even still, you're responsible for it, so make sure you are, you are watching out, okay?